Welcome to Diving Deeper. I'm Pastor Jim, and this is the second of our hopefully many sessions where we get to dive deeper into passages related to the theological or moral concepts connected to our present sermon series. For the last three weeks, we've been going through the uh, book of Job, and we've been looking at some of the problem of suffering. I know it's such a complicated problem. It's not just a, a simple answer. There are so many different facets to our suffering. And I think the book of Job definitely brings out that, at very least. And today, we're going to look at some of the very basic causes of our suffering. In the book of Job, so far, we've seen that Job is a good man. There isn't really a directly connected reason why he is going through the suffering that he's going through. In fact, in the first two chapters, we'll hear even God himself say that Job is a blameless man, blameless and upright in all that he does and all that he says. And, um, you know, he's a man who sincerely and earnestly fears God. And yet, even so, we see that he actually suffers for some unknown reasons. Some people have theorized that it's because of training, that he needs to be strengthened in some way to grow in maturity. And sometimes that is true. Sometimes we do suffer so that we can grow in our maturity. Sometimes it's through the agency of Satan or other wicked people that causes us stress, that causes us to reach out and rely heavily on God, or causes us simply to release our grip on uh, the things of this world, to not hold so tightly as we tend to, to the things that we think matter most. Uh, so that's one potential reason. Of course, Job wasn't suffering because of that. He was suffering unknowingly and unwillingly, partly for a greater purpose, separate from what he was going through. And so that's kind of the second thing. There is such thing as purposeful suffering. I would say all suffering has a purpose, even if we can't define it, even if we struggle to try to understand it, there is a purpose to it. It finds meaning in light of who God is and his created order. Sometimes, though, we don't see that purpose until much, much later. Uh, Joseph himself, if you look at the example from the Old Testament, not Joseph, the father of Jesus, but Joseph in the Old Testament, his brothers intended harm for him and yet God intended it for his good. That's kind of a crazy thing to really think about, that he would wind up, thanks to his brothers selling him into slavery, that he would wind up rescuing them from famine and saving them along with so many, many more people. There are so many other aspects where suffering doesn't seem to connect with uh, discipline. Uh, most of Job's friends, as we'll see as we're walking through the book of Job, feel that it must be because Job has sinned somehow that now God is disciplining him. He's calling him back on track. Uh, the whole idea would be that somehow that Job would repent of whatever wrongdoing he has unknowingly committed and that God would restore him. Kind of like um, where we do see some people in Scripture, they go through some hard times which are disciplined for them, and they hate it along the way, but God is doing that to get them back on track. I might think of uh, David and Bathsheba after he had cheated and had uh, Bathsheba's husband murdered, you know, and eventually David actually did have a kid with Bathsheba. Now, all that he did was wrong, not having the kid, but... All that he did in, in, in um, uh, lusting after Bathsheba, in pursuing a, a sexual relationship with her and killing her husband, all those things were sinful and wicked and wrong. Not only that, but he avoided the battle that he was most likely supposed to lead the Israelites in against the enemies of Israel. Still, all because of that, then God sent Nathan the prophet to correct David and wake him up and hopefully say, hey, listen, your son is going to die and he's going to suffer because of your sin. And so this is discipline to bring you back to him. Along with discipline kind of comes the edge of judgment. And that is another potential reason why people suffer. I mean, if you think about the fact that Cain, after he murdered his brother Abel, 
he was kind of kicked out of the whole loop of life. I mean, he was told he was going to have an incredibly difficult life and he was going to struggle all his lives and he was going to be marked so that everyone would know that. Um, so there's an aspect of that that it was God's punishing him for his disobedience or even his um, hostility towards God and for God's people. Another uh, part where we, that may, we may suffer, we may be caused to suffer, comes from persecution. Now, that persecution could be from God's enemies in, in human form, or it could be inspired by Satan. The desire that they might destroy God's work and God's people. Now, that is uh, rampant all throughout Scripture. We see it um, in Haman, who decided to uh, annihilate the Jews. He was going to try to annihilate all the Jews in Esther. Uh, however, that backfired on him pretty severely, and he wound up hanging by the same gallows he created for them. Um, or if you look at you know Saul and his pursuit and persecution of David, even though Saul was God's anointed king, he went off the rails, and because of that began to persecute people. Or you see time and time again in the New Testament where God's people are persecuted by those who simply uh, hate Jesus and hate what he stands for. So again and again we see suffering because of persecution. Another part of our suffering is part of the natural consequences of our own foolishness and stupidity. You've probably experienced this just as much as me. Sometimes we do something dumb. Uh, I think of one time when I thought I was invincible. I was 30 years old and I tried to go down a ramp on a skateboard and it wasn't a big ramp, but I didn't know what I was doing and I fell straight down. I tried to brace myself with my arms and in so doing, I really hurt my elbows, causing long-term pain. Um, but all that to be said, sometimes it's our own stupidity. It reminds me also of uh, when Jesus talks in Matthew 7 about uh, whoever builds their house upon the sand. And then they find all the, the wind and the rain come down and the floods come up and the house on the sand gets washed away because it's not built on a solid foundation. It's not built on obedience. It's built on just foolishness. And Proverbs is filled with so much of advice as to uh, how to avoid those natural consequences that come along with making bad or foolish choices. And keep in mind that sometimes it's not as much a sinful choice. Sometimes it is just a foolish choice that caused us to suffer and to struggle. Now, um, I will be talking a little bit more next week about this next category of suffering, um, catastrophe. Sometimes there are these natural things that happen in the world, earthquakes, hurricanes, volcanoes, plagues, things that they're very difficult to pin to any one particular sin that someone might have um, committed. And so it seems like it comes indiscriminately upon both the good and the bad, right? The rain falls on both the good and the bad, um, and the sun shines on both the good and the bad. And so in all of these ways, we see that the suffering doesn't seem to be deserved. Of course, we could say, well, it's part of living in a sinful fallen world and the fact that we are all sinners destined eventually to die. And so, yeah, sin is part of living in this world. It's part of our everyday struggle. Um, but still, that's very difficult for us to wrap our brains around. And um, Jesus, even when he's questioned about suffering, there was a, a big tower that collapsed. He said it wasn't necessarily because of their sin. It wasn't necessarily because of something that they had done. Um, but it does help us to realize that life is short. Life is uncertain. There's all sorts of challenges provided us throughout this life, reminding us that our time here is short. And that while we have the chance, we should repent and turn and trust in God. Whatever the cause of the suffering we might be going through, whether you're going through economic hard times, maybe because of your lack of good decisions and saving money, or maybe because of simply the way the economy has taken a downturn thanks to the uh, pandemic, or maybe you've been suffering because of the pandemic and you say, why is this disease in this world? Why is this happening to me? 
all of these big whys, well, there are some potential reasons. And I know that whatever the cause, no matter what it is, it hurts. And sometimes it's not simple to comprehend. But at the same end, throughout it all, whatever may come, however painful it may be, as we continue to walk through Job, I believe that we're going to find that we can still trust God through it all. As I said, next week we're going to explore some more of the rational explanations for evil that um, some very smart people have put forward to help us try to understand this world around us. Why is there evil in the world? Why do we suffer? These are big questions I don't pretend to answer in 10 minutes or less. Um, but I do want to say that uh, I, I appreciate you watching and I hope you continue to watch as we keep exploring these important topics that do affect us in our everyday life. Until next time, keep diving deeper into God's Word and remember, you are loved.